fed me? No. The weird pig? No. <laughs> because because you're a badass, so not at all. Yeah? Uh-huh. You're strong. Just like Gabriel one else. Well, you're gonna help me. Because I'm a lost soul. Whatever so I help you want, you can have. <laughs> Thank you. See, right when you texted me, I was I didn't even go inside yet. Oh. I yeah, had, I had to come back and get the bean bag. You nothing, were right. I should have just taken it. Nothing wrong with that. It's very tempting, huh? <laughs> Especially when you have nowhere to sit. Yeah. Yeah. There's a dog up there. Yeah, that's flash. There's a dog up there. Yeah, that's flash. Flash? Flash? Flash. Hi. Oh. Are you ready for your interview? Sure. <laughs> okay. Do you want to do you want to go sit down somewhere? You want to try out the beanbag? Yeah. <laughs> Well, so you had a brain injury. Yes. And it was when you were 28. Yes. From a, your truck rolled. Yes. How, uh, what happened in the accident? Like, why did your truck roll? The uh, uh, car cut us off. So, and... The driver, you know, tried to avoid him, and we, he lost control. Mm -hmm. I got ejected, landed on my head. Ejected out the passenger window? There was the driver, the passenger, and I was the passenger in the back of the truck. In the back. Like the back seat. That, mm -hmm. Not the bed. Yeah. Okay. But okay. the seat. Mm -hmm. I. I. Got ejected. So I. Broke my collarbone. Going out. Going out of the trunk. So it was like this, then I had so much to, the doctors had so much to worry about, they said that I had to help with it, they let it fuse together, so now it's like this. Mm. Oh well. So, you got ejected, and then how far did you fly? Oof. I wasn't looking for any record or anything. <laughs> I, I, the, I will, I don't know how far I flew, but I flew out, landed on my skull, Jeez. and then, oh, that's not the worst part. As the truck was rolling behind me, I'm laying in the street. Were you awake? Um, probably. You don't remember it? Nah. As it's rolling, it lands right on me. Oh my gosh. The other agents that came by... Agents, because you were border control? Border patrol, yeah. Mm -hmm. They were like, oh, where, where's Mark at? Oh, see the legs out of the tuck? That's him. Wow, it's like the Wizard of Oz. So, so it shattered my pelvis, screwed up my legs, 
internal bleeding tore my bladder in half? Oh, I got fucked. <laughs> you gotta watch your language. <laughs> I got messed up. So, then you woke up in the hospital. And, uh, what? Well, first, they pulled me out, they sat me down, and they thought I was okay, because I was sitting down, saying, hey, what's up, how you doing? <laughs> That's creepy. And then... And then the uh, nurse with the EMTs said, uh, we'll send him on the life flight. Soon as I got in the helicopter, I was in my coma. Mm. So if, if I was in the ambulance, I'd be dead. Yeah. Because the doctor said, if I, if seven minutes were done, nothing can be done, I'd be dead. After you go into the coma? Like, if I got to the hospital seven minutes later, mm -hmm. I'm nothing. Dang, how long were you in a coma for? Um... I was in a coma for like four days. I was in the hospital for like three months or something. Mm. I see you for like three weeks, whatever. And now it's been like 15 years or 13, something? 13, yes. 13? And what, how are you still affected? Like mentally and physically? Um, everything is like, you get used to it, you know? Because I had so many tubes going down my throat, I would wake up for like two seconds and freak out and pull them all uh, out. Uh. So I messed up my vocal cords oh so it it hurts when i talk because uh, the vocal cords vibrate they should have tied your hands down or something oh they did oh but the vocal cords they do hurt but whatever pain i'm used to it now uh. oh well just tough it out yeah so they after i did that a few times they said uh we're tying his wrist to mm -hmm. the bed i was told all this i didn't know it mm -hmm. they told me oh this is what you did what about you no i want to keep hearing your story uh so it hurts you to talk Oh. Whoa. It sounds painful. It's... Does that make you not want to talk as much? I... I'd say... I don't talk as much. But... Say... The... Trash talking that I do. Cause I used to love... Talking... <laughs> poo poo. Or whatever. <laughs> Whatever amount it is now, I'd say it's a 50% now. 50% trash talking? Because <laughs> the amount of me trash talking now, that's only 50% of what I would normally do. Yeah. So now it's like, if I talk... Why, why use four words when one can do, you know? Mm -hmm. That's why when 
people ask me, oh, well, what have you been doing? I'd say nothing. There's a lot of uh, things to do. Yeah. Oh, nothing. Um, is your, like, you're quadriplegic, right? Yes. Is that because you had a spinal cord injury or is that your brain injury? Well, brain. That's so the, crazy. The other guys on my team, the, it's only for quads. Quad rugby. The, when you break your neck, you're paralyzed from about here down mm -hmm. and either you can't open your fingers or close your fingers whatever so there so it affects one two three four limbs yeah mine is brain so mine's Instead of horizontal, my mind affects vertically. Oh. So this left side is really, really uncoordinated. Mm. The right side is like numb. Yeah. So, like, example. I can do this that's as fast as I can do mm. it and the fingers are all messed up mm. that's the best I can explain is it hard for you to get words out because of your brain injury or is that because your throat hurts when you talk it's a combination of both mm. what happens is I'm I'm thinking of something, so I'm thinking and trying to talk at the same time mm -hmm. and deal with the pain. Mm -hmm. I've dealt with that, so I'm not worried about that. But what makes it slower is me trying to think of what I'm going to say then sing it if it if it comes by really quick I'll say it regular mm -hmm. but I gotta like if I if I wanted to curse I'll I could say it quick mm -hmm. but I've gotta think of a not a curse word to substitute for the curse word so I'm thinking mm -hmm. what uh, what to say that's yeah. why it takes me longer does that frustrate you oh yeah. unbelievably frustrating yeah so how do you deal with that since it's been 13 years you you dealt with it you just do it yeah, just do it. Exactly. Do you get sad? You don't? You just no. get frustrated? Do you get angry? No. Actually. You're just a happy guy, huh? Yeah. Really, you're always happy? Because you seem like you're always happy, but is that real life? Well. Because I have depression, so I get sad a lot. And that's not because of my injury, it's just I just have depression. Yeah. But. I always wonder about other people. Like, I don't know what it's like to not have depression. You know, like... I understand. I don't understand how you can... I don't know. It would be so amazing to not have it. I get that, like, you have hard times, but the hard times, like, come and go. But depression, you're just sad. Yeah. It's... Like, you don't get sad or go into funk because so, you're so frustrated or, or in pain? Well... It's more of not not I get sad not because of my injury. It's external factors mm -hmm. like regular human stuff. Yeah, like you get lonely. Well, not really. Except. 
my mother passed away not not too long ago. How long ago? Like a year? About. How did she pass away? Cancer. Oh. Some cancer. Yeah. So I was bummed out, yeah. So example is that's external. Mm-hmm. Me, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like I said, it, mine's not because this. Yeah. But I think that's why I want to do interviews of people because a lot of people think that if you have a disability or you're in a wheelchair that you're really sad because of that. Yeah. And we're not. We just live our lives. Yeah. But, of course, there are things that are hard, you know? Like, like you struggling to communicate. I'm, oh. Like, that's got to be overwhelming. and. There's... There's times, yeah, there's a lot of times where you get frustrated and angry, yeah, but what else am I going to do? Yeah. I'm not going to sit back and whine about it, just keep going. I just interviewed a guy who... um he had a seizure when he was born, and so he had brain injury from that, and he struggles to talk, and he's so nice, and he was saying how it's too bad because a lot of times people overlook you, like, when you, you know, when you struggle, like, when you struggle to get things out, or because you look different or sound different, yeah. do you feel like you get overlooked because of your communication? It happens every day. Oh. Every day. Yeah. That's why a lot of times I say it. <laughs> People are like always in such a hurry and. Yes. Yeah. And that's like nothing about you. That's just how people it's are. That's how they are. Mm -hmm. So I say, F it. I'll just stay quiet. Do you like for are you able to be understanding and forgiving of them for yeah. treating you like that? Or Definitely. Do people ever act annoyed of you? Like when we were when I was in college, my friends, my teammates and stuff for wheelchair basketball would want to go out to the bars and this was like two or three years after my accident and I hated going out in crowded places because I felt like People would be like, you know, what are you, you're in the way, like, get, you know, like, yeah. big wheelchair, like, there's not enough room for you, and things like that, so, do you ever feel like, like, I don't know, anything like that? Like a burden? Yeah. At first I did, uh -huh. when I first got hurt, Yeah. then it's, ah, down with it. Yeah. They exactly. got a problem? Tough. Yeah. Now it's now my problem. I got my own problems. Yeah. They got their own deal with it, you know? Yeah, exactly. I just, I learned like the whole forgiveness thing. You just have to forgive and yeah. understand they don't, they have no idea. Like, it's, my thing is. I mind my own business, they mind their own business. If it's their thing, now it doesn't affect me. Yeah. Now my business, so I don't care. Exactly. Hmm. Have you uh, dated since your injury? No. You haven't met anyone? Well, it's... More like I was in a serious relationship when I got hurt. Then she threw me away. So it's how long, how soon after your injury did she leave you? I'd say a year. Mm -hmm. Just can't handle it. Are you? Were you mad at her for that, or did you kind of understand? I understood. How did you take it? Part of life, I guess. Yeah. 
But but was it like hard? Did you? Yeah. Did it take you a long time. It to get... was. It's rough. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said before, what am I gonna st- cry in the corner? Yeah. No, gotta keep going. Mm-hmm. That's all. So you never, like, this is a deep question, but this is just kind of what comes with depression, but, like, you never feel like ending your life, like, you never felt like you wanted to end your life, or you just didn't want to do it anymore, ever, no. even after your accident? Like Never. That's awesome. I got, I still got things to do, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I love it. What about you? <laughs> well, there's a big lid coming up. Smart. If I'm holding on to something. I don't want to set this on the ground. This is dirty. Yeah, I know. How about here you go? Ugh. I'll hold it for you. How about that? Oh, I got it. Okay. Got it. Look at that. Smart. But it's comfortable, right? Yes. Okay. Let's see if I can fit my chair in here. I'm not gonna be able to see out of the back. Eh. But that's okay. You don't need to see. Huh. It's overrated. It is overrated. It is. Yeah. Accidents don't happen every day. Not at all. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. They get fits. Voila! Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. You're the best. <laughs>